You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hey, the show's about to start, but I want to remind you because we bring this up at the end of the show and maybe you don't listen to the whole show. If you don't, Adam and I are very disappointed in you. What's wrong with you? Uh, but we have a phone number now. Yes, well, we've had this phone number forever, and then we don't use it. And then we decided that we're gonna, this is a test. We're going to test the use of the phone number. And if you use this phone number, we'll keep it. If you don't, it'll just go back into obscurity where it's been <laughs> for the better part of five years. But if you want to reach out to us uh, after you hear this, uh, you can call us at 615-538-5770. I feel like I'm doing a telethon. Do it. Call now. Make a donation. Do it. With your help, we can wipe this thing out. <laughs> Call 615-538-5770. And now here's the show. Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to rock? Initialize sequence. What is this? Some kind of sick practical joke? Ooh, yeah. I bet that pizza tastes good. This is where the world of pop culture and talk collide. <laughs> Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. I'm a little bit frightened of you, and I like the theme. This is the Adam and JP Adam show. Adam and JP show. Groovy. I love geeks. <laughs> the Tuesday Adam and JP show brought to you by our friends at Outer Limits Comics. We love comic books. We do. We love superheroes. We do. We pretty much love anybody in a cape. Star Wars action figures. We love them as well. A huge oh, wall over there. Force Friday Force was Friday this happened. Friday. Yeah. So if you couldn't get your... Do we know anybody? anybody the name want... of anybody from Rogue well, One? Yeah, but I can't spoil it. You should go to your local toy store or even your local comic shop and check out those toys. If you if you didn't get your main antagonist figure <laughs> from Rogue One... I'm sure you listen to a Collection Connection with Josh. Do that now, and I'm sure he'll talk about his Force Friday pickups. I'm sure of it. You think he has some? Oh, of course. Maybe. It's Force Friday, man. But or if you missed Rogue out, Friday. you can go uh, probably find some Star Wars figures at Outer, Outer Limits Comics. Yeah. Some Star Wars figures at Outer Limits Comics. But now I wonder if, because you know the actual the Force Awakens toys are still huge. You go to Target or Walmart, it almost has a whole aisle to itself of those toys. At this point, I guess it's time to, for those to go on clearance and sale now, huh? That's true. Think about it. All those BB-8s. Because the Rogue One's mm-hmm. taken over. Maybe. I gotta tell you, man, that scene with the stormtroopers walking through the water. Yeah. That's just classic. Oh, yeah. You think so? In Rogue One in the yeah, trailer? Yeah. I don't think that's spoiling anything. No, 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 no. no. Water walking stormtroopers. No. Why did you tell me that? I've avoided yeah. all the trailers. <laughs> I still want more force. In your Friday? <laughs> in my... In your Rogue One? Peanut butter. Yeah, my Star Wars. Uh, Outer Limits Comics. Uh-huh, yes. On the social media. Right. At Outer Limits TN. Or just Google Outer Limits Comics. Just you, do it. You'll get a map. Jeez. You can go there. AltaVista.com. Is that still a thing? I'm going to check it right now. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. No, no, no. Uh, Yahoo. Is Yahoo still a thing? I think so. Yahoo. Uh, Adam. Wow. What? You go to AltaVista.com, one of my old favorite search engines. It takes you to Yahoo.com search. So they bought it. Weird. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Who's, who's going to Yahoo to search? Who uses AOL anymore? Yeah. This guy is still that has ser- an AOL address. Is that still a service, though, like an actual internet service? Can no, have- it's, just a, it's just a landing site. It's just an email provider now. Like, I, used, I used to love that service, Like Google. Oh. I stood by that yes, for a you, long time. You can still search. using. There's still a search bar. But can you still have that as your AOL. internet provider, AOL? I don't know. I don't know if you can get the CD out of the Omni magazine. I used to love that. And load it up. Like I stood, I was with it for a long time. Like I, 04, was, I still had AOL. Yeah. I know I've had the uh, the same email address, the same AOL address. I mean, I have Gmail now, mm-hmm. but there still is an AOL address yeah. I can use. Uh, 1998 mm-hmm. or 9 is when I got that AOL address. When we first started this show, the email for the show was an AOL email address. That's right. <laughs> Because you can just have as many as you want. Yeah. And they're easy to get, and they don't go you through. You get an email. You get an email. And you get an email. Um, we have Adam's Ghost coming up. We do. Do you want to share where we're going No, it's a Adam's surprise. Ghost? It's a game time decision. <laughs> the people have spoken. The numbers are still coming in. It's a, it's a poll too close. AKA, to- you haven't looked it up yet. <laughs> it's too early to say where well, we're going. While you're on Alta Vista, <laughs> search ghost stories. All right. 
Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe because I've got a database. It's so deep you wouldn't even know. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> Um, have you ever heard of the Cleveland Torso Murders, Adam? I have not. Or the Butcher of Kingsbury Run? No. Uh, this was a crime spree, a serial killer, if you will, in the 1930s in mm. Cleveland. Cleveland was a city on the rise. Despite the effects of the Great Depression, many people were, uh, again, doing well. Against this backdrop, one of the most prolific and gruesome serial killers of all time carried out his acts of horror, distracting the citizens from the pride and prosperity of the times. 13 people were brutally murdered over the course of four years, beginning in 1934. All of them, by the way, the details here may get a little graphic. Ooh, grotesque. So just if you're squeamish, just a heads up, turn away. I mean, I I won't make it too over the top gross, but there are, uh, there are some seedy details. Okay. Okay. Uh, over the course of four years, beginning in 1934, all of them decapitated, most of them while they were still alive. Mm. Although then safety director, Elliot Ness, yes, that Elliot Ness, like the Untouchables, Elliot Ness mm-hmm. led the Untouchables you know, to uh, go after Al Capone and bootleggers and all that in Chicago. After he did all that, he moved to Cleveland and was the uh, safety director for Cleveland. Uh, although then safety director Elliot Ness claimed to have solved the crimes, no suspect was identified and no one has been brought to trial. The murders ended as abruptly as they had begun. To this day, the Kingsbury Run murders remain one of the most sensational and intriguing unsolved crimes in our nation's history. Hmm. So starting in 1934, basically what would happen is someone would stumble upon a cut up body or body parts, and then searching the area would find other pieces of the body. Jeez. It was believed that this murderer had some sort of medical training. Because much like a Jack the Ripper, okay. Much like Jack the Ripper. Mm-hmm. Because the way the bodies were cut lent to the theory that he knew what he was doing when it came to cutting human anatomy. And over the course of these murders, sometimes he would wrap body pieces in butcher's paper, like that kind of brown butcher's paper that Mm -hmm. you used to buy meat in. Mm -hmm. He would wrap the bodies in that. Sometimes he would find clothing and wrap the body parts in these. Um, And usually he would target. A lot of these victims are still John and Jane Doe's. Really? Because they couldn't be identified. And a lot of the victims came from, even though this article that was from a Cleveland website uh, you know, proclaim that Cleveland was a city on the rise. There was a large, large, poor population in Cleveland at the time, and that's who this guy would target. Um, uh, the shanty towns of Cleveland is where he would usually pick up his victims. So rather than going through victim number one and victim number two, I'm going to jump to victim number six because by victim number six is when this started to become a real scary problem for the people of Cleveland in the 1930s. Victim number six was in his late 20s, and the cause of death, yet again, was decapitation. That happened while, I mean, he didn't kill the victims before he decapitated Mm -hmm. them. Uh, Corner, whose last name was Pierce, noted that the lack of hesitation marks and the uh, deacceleration of the body indicated a strong, confident killer, very familiar with the human anatomy. The head had been cut off with one bold, clean stroke. The victim died instantly. Identification was never made. Six brutal killings in one year, and the police had neither clues nor suspects. The Cleveland Press, the Cleveland News, and the Cleveland Plain Dealer all reported almost daily on the killings and the lack of a suspect. Tension was high. Who was the, quote, mad butcher of Kingsbury Run? Giving into the mounting pressure uh, from Mayor Harold Burton, recently appointed safety director Elliot Ness gets more involved in the case. Coroner Pierce calls for what the newspapers dubbed a torso clinic, a meeting of police, the coroner, and other experts to discuss information and to profile someone who could be responsible for these gruesome killings. So it was basically the coroner who got everybody together and said, let's profile this guy. Uh, and that's when they started to put together that he was could have been a doctor of some sort. August 18, 1938, at 1240 a.m., Elliot Ness and a group of 35 police officers and detectives raid the hobo jungles of the run. 11 squad cars, two police vans, and three fire trucks descend 
on the largest cluster of makeshift shacks, Nessa's raiders worked their way south through the run, eventually gathering up 63 men. At dawn, police and firemen searched the deserted shanties for clues. Then, on orders of the safety director Ness, the shacks were set on fire and burned to the ground. Hmm. So, you have this horrible serial killer on the loose. Nobody knows who it is. They've got some clues and a profile of the guy, but no one really to start talking to. So they go, they round up 63 people in the shanty towns and then burn the place to the ground. Wow. So the, the serial killer rampage caused the officials of Cleveland to basically turn on the homeless population and burn down the only shelter these people had. It's like a witch hunt. Yeah. And, and here's what, what fascinates me. It was Elliot Ness who did this. The guy that went after Al Capone wow. is going in and, and, and now, by this time in his career in Cleveland, is burning, burning down shantytowns. <laughs> the press severely criticized Ness for his actions. The public was afraid and frustrated. Critics said the raid would do nothing to solve the murders. They were right, but for whatever reason, they did stop. The Kingsbury Run murders remain one of the most perplexing cases in our nation's criminal history. Rumors abound as to who may have been the killer. One thing is clear. Elliot Ness had one suspect who he believed was undoubtedly the killer. The suspect continued to taunt Ness for years after the killing had stopped. All official police records on this case have been lost, destroyed, or removed. So he had this um, this one guy in mind, uh, a guy by the name of Frank, who was a doctor uh, in the area. And he kind of fit the profile. He was an alcoholic. He uh, was a World War I medic and veteran. On the battlefield in World War I was a lot of on-the-spot surgery. Mm. So this is where he would get a lot of the experience. Shortly before the murder stopped, this guy entered voluntarily a psychiatric care facility. And then once he went into the psychiatric care facility, the killing stopped. Mm. So it's theorized that maybe it wasn't the burning of the shantytown that stopped the killings. But it was the fact that the the guy who did it actually checked him into a, himself into a psych ward. Wow! Now Elliot Ness interviewed this guy. Uh, he took a polygraph test and failed twice. <laughs> and Elliot Ness conducted this interview and this polygraph test not at the police station, but for some reason that no one knows, met the guy in a hotel room in the uh, in one of the big hotels in downtown Cleveland. And this whole interrogation and polygraph test were conducted in a hotel room, not in the police station. It's kind of sketchy. Oh, yeah. Frank Sweeney was the guy's name. Uh, Sweeney was later personally interviewed by Ness, who oversaw the official investigation in the killings in his capacity as Cleveland's safety director. During the interrogation, Sweeney is said to have, quote, failed to pass two very early polygraph machine tests. With Elliot Ness's popularity as a uh, police officer or crime fighter, he basically was friends with the guy who invented the polygraph test. Uh. So once Ness had zeroed in on this guy being his suspect, he contacted his friend with the polygraph machine. He came to Cleveland and personally conducted these tests. Wow. Uh, both tests were administered by polygraph expert Leonard Keeler, who told Ness he had his man. Nevertheless, Ness apparently felt there was little chance of obtaining, of obtaining successful prosecution of the doctor, especially as he was the first cousin of, of one of Ness's political opponents, Congressman Martin L. Sweeney, who had hounded Ness publicly about his failure to catch the killer. So it could have been politics that prevent the Cleveland Torso killer from actually being arrested and prosecuted. Though Ness really didn't have any evidence. He had theories, and it, he fit the profile, but there was no evidence. Much like today, trying to make a murder. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Now, here's one interesting um, one interesting thing about uh, this serial killer. Uh, are you familiar with the Black Dahlia murder yes. in Los Angeles? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not, the, the Black Dahlia was a nickname given to Elizabeth Short, a woman who was the victim of a much-publicized murder in 1947. Short acquired the moniker from newspapers in the habit of nicknaming crimes they found particularly lurid. The Black Dahlia nickname may have been derived from a film noir murder mystery, The Blue Dahlia, released in April of 1946. Uh, In 1947, Elizabeth 
Short's body was found in the Lemire Park in Los Angeles, California. Her unsolved murder has been the source of widespread speculation, leading to many suspects, along with several books, television, and film adaptations. Short's murder is one of the oldest unsolved mystery cases in Los Angeles history. There's a theory Uh that the Cleveland Torso murderer left Cleveland, came to Los Angeles, and the Black Dahlia was actually his last victim. Mm. And the reason why that is is because her murder fit the M.O. of the murders in Cleveland. Really? She was, her torso was cut in half, and without getting too gruesome, her body was posed in such a way that whoever did it, obviously, once again, had a working knowledge of how to cut the human body without it just appearing to be a bloody massacre. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a surgical splitting of her body. And uh, that, along with other clue, clues found at the scene, led some to speculate that the Cleveland Torso killer was actually the killer of the Black Dahlia in Los Angeles. And, and timeline-wise, that was after the guy was in the uh, hospital? or Well, here's the thing. Uh-huh. If it was the same killer, then that exonerates Frank Sweeney from being okay. the uh, the mad butcher of Kingsbury Run. Okay. Um, but they did have another suspect in mind uh, from Cleveland mm-hmm. that did travel to Los Angeles around that time. Really? And um, since the two crimes were similar, uh, when the Black Dahlia happened, the investigators in Los Angeles actually reached out to Cleveland authorities to get information that they had because they believed that it, it could be connected. Uh, but... When you read more about the Black Dahlia case, you find out that someone actually started teasing the authorities in Los Angeles through a newspaper claiming that they were the murderer, that they would never be caught, and started sending articles that belonged to Elizabeth Short to the authorities through the newspaper. Really? I believe I get that. I've got that right. Hmm. So, it's just fascinating. Yeah. And creepy. For sure. Serial killer stories are always creepy. Yeah, they are. Yeah. (sighs) Hmm. Who's your favorite serial killer? Uh, <laughs> there's always that, that kind of allure to it. Like we've talked about before, there's a point in someone's life where uh, they were born a normal person, sometimes had a normal childhood, sometimes not, but something somewhere made them snap. Like Charles Manson. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening to a podcast now called You Must Remember This. Uh-huh. Uh, it's basically a history of the first 100 years of Hollywood, and the host did a 12-part series on Charles Manson, Charles Manson's Hollywood. And when you hear about this man, it is just, it is ridiculous. Like his drive was fame that he always sought, came close to achieving, but had this gift of, well, with the help of a lot of, um, a lot of LSD, mm-hmm. uh, of, you know, inspiring people and, and could, I mean, he was a cult leader. Oh, he, yeah, he, could, sure. he was like a David Koresh and could draw people to him under the most ridiculous pretenses, and people would follow him. And when you see Charles Manson today, I mean, he's just this weird, creepy little short guy. He is, yeah. But he had a lot of followers back in the day. Oh, yeah. And convinced a lot of people to do a lot of things. I mean, it's theorized. It's theorized. Like, the whole thing that you hear about Charles Manson is he never committed one murder. He just convinced people to do it, which may be true. That's what he claims. But there's evidence that in the second murders, not the not the uh, Sharon Tate murders, mm-hmm. but the second, I forget the um, I forget the couple's name. It was the elderly couple that yeah. had just bought a house and happened to be a house that Charles Manson had been to before, and so that's why he picked it. Um, that he may have actually been involved in that because he was there that night. Really, he was not happy. He was not pleased with what had happened in in, in the the Sharon Tate murder. Mm-hmm. And so he actually went with the group that second night, the, the night after, like the very next night uh-huh. is when that second really? murder scene. You kind of forget that they weren't caught immediately. No, it was months because they had no idea. They didn't even know the two were related. Right. And well, there's evidence that they should have seen that the two were related. But after the, uh, the, the first murder, he went back to the scene and arranged things in the house to make it look like he was like set decorating really the house. He just left a random pair of glasses that he had found thinking that would throw the police off. Of course, you know, his whole 
thing was, I can convince authorities that this was Black Panthers that did this. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Because Helter Skelter, this is what he preached to his followers, is that Helter Skelter was going to be a race war between whites and blacks. You know, he convinced his followers that if they followed him, he could protect them from this by finding a secret cave in the desert and going down a hole into the cave to wow. this underground city where they would wait out the race war and then come back and be the saviors of humanity. Wow. Did he actually believe that? No. He, this is just what he was able to get people to buy into, mostly young girls who had father issues that mm-hmm. had run away from home. Right. Wow. And, uh, yeah, research Charles Manson. Yeah, crazy guy. Not just the murders, but Charles Manson before the murders. Yeah, watch interviews of his. He's a uh, uh, creepy character. I mean, I believe he's the— because, you know, after the murders happened, Dennis Wilson pretty much went into a deep depression the rest of his life. Really? And he died in what they consider to be uh, an accidental drowning, but witnesses say he just kept jumping into the water. Really? And would come up. And he was, you know, he was on drugs and he was drunk. But there's a speculation that he was so depressed that he just, he was trying to kill himself every time he jumped in the water. And then one time didn't come up. Hmm. Um, But when you find out who is connected to the, the Charles Manson saga, names like Dennis Hopper comes up, names like Jack Nicholson come up as being these, these Hollywood you know, the, the Hollywood scene at the time that, I mean, Dennis Hopper attended the Manson hearings on a regular basis. Really? And then when Charles Manson realized Dennis Hopper was in the audience, got his attorneys to request an interview or, or a meeting with Dennis Hopper. And Dennis Hopper met with Charles Manson for like two hours at the jail. What did they talk about? He was trying to get into the head of Dennis and used stuff that he'd found out about Charles Manson in a movie that he was directing, really? or I don't, I think he was producing. He acted in, but didn't direct. Wow! And, and was kind of using Manson as an influence. When you see the movie that Hopper did after that, he looks like Charles Charlie Manson. Really? In, in the movie? Huh? Yeah. And, and, uh, and I guess it was just a weird. It was a weird time in Hollywood. It was, yeah. The, you know that that the sixties were, you know, coming to an end, and, and you know at the t- at the time that Charles Manson started his family. Uh, LSD was legal. Mm-hmm. I mean, LSD hadn't been outlawed yet. So you had all these, you know, these crazy hippie kids just s- spacing themselves out for days on end. And I think they were constantly under the influence uh, cra- uh, of yeah. drugs. I'm sure it's the way they, I mean, I saw them was in the courthouse afterwards. They're crawling on all fours and their hands and knees going mm-hmm. into the courthouse. Yeah. It was a crazy time because you had the news, you had that war time, and everyone knew about the war going on. And mostly in the land, you had uh, just peaceful people against the war. But then you had this kind of thing happen as well on your own turf, and it was a weird time. Yeah, uh, one of the most fascinating things I think about that whole Charlie Manson saga is, I mean, he was seeking fame. He thought he was going to be a rock star, mm-hmm. and he came very close. I mean, hanging out with Dennis Wilson, living in Dennis Wilson's house, writing a song that the Beach Boys did record. I mean, Dennis Wilson rewrote it, and Charlie Manson didn't get a writing credit, but the Beach Boys did record a song that Charles Manson more or less wrote. Um, <laughs> So he thought he would become a rock star and, 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 and made the inroads that you need to do that, but never did. He never achieved that success that he wanted. And I think he realized that when that trial started, He was the superstar that he wanted to be, just not in the way that he wanted to be it. So he really started to play up the crazy. I don't think Charlie Manson was ever as crazy as he... I mean, he was, you know, spaced out of his mind on drugs. But I don't think you can control people like that for that long, for years, years and years and years, through the various moves and through the various houses they would live in. And then Spawn Ranch, which Mm. was the abandoned... Hollywood old old West set that that still had buildings and they they lived there for a while and then his big play was to move the family out uh, to the desert and and to search for the magical hole in the earth uh-huh. where they would survive the race <laughs> war. I don't think you do all that and control people like that and be totally stupid right I think in some levels he was a very smart man he was very savvy 
when it came to knowing people and knowing the personalities of people. Mm -hmm. Because everyone says you would meet a different Charlie Manson based upon who you were and what you could do for him. He treated, you know, other hippies differently than he treated record executives. So, uh, he always had a mean streak and, uh, he actually thought he'd kill the guy. Really? He was a drug dealer and he had set up a drug deal with this guy that the guy would give him $25,000 for you know, 2,500 pounds of marijuana or mm-hmm. something like that. And so he set up this deal through his family. He made this deal happen and then they got the money and then didn't deliver the marijuana and kept the money. Mm. And so this guy was looking for Charlie Manson. And when he found him, he told him he was part of the Black Panthers and that if he didn't give him his money or give him the marijuana, the Black Panthers would be after him. Really? Well, Charles Manson shot the guy and then left. Well, as soon as the guy got shot, he played dead. Char- for years, Charles Manson thought he'd killed the guy and the Black Panthers were after wow. him. Wow. Turns out the guy wasn't a member of the Black Panthers. <laughs> oh, gosh. And survived the shot. And, and Charles Manson didn't know that man lived through that until his sentencing hearing after the murders or after the trial. And they presented that guy as a witness that, yes, Charles Manson has the capacity to kill. As a matter of fact, here's a man that Charles Manson believed he killed years ago. Wow. Mm-hmm. That would freak someone out. Yeah, and he testified at the, uh, at the sentencing. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's in, in a weird way, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that there's, like, there's something that makes them snap. I should, like to find out what that is. That's all there is to it. You know, it's I don't know if it is it technology, is it just smarter people? How can and you do have certain sections of society that try to live off the grid or whatnot, but you don't have weird communes like that now. Yeah, in general, I mean, if, as far as serial killers go, we don't really have that. As well, often anymore. Well, not just serial killers, but I mean, you know, the Manson family was just one commune of mm-hmm. many at that time mm-hmm. uh, of of basically the same type of person, like a, a young white hippie. Yeah. And then they would go and they would live and they would try to live off the land and then they would fail at that. And so they would scavenge for food uh-huh. and beg and do whatever they had to do to survive. You don't have commune. It just doesn't, maybe they're there, and I'm just not aware of them. But yeah. we don't really have that now. I think. I mean, the more exposure to that, and the more that happens, it's it's seen as a bad thing. The the leader probably has bad intentions, but I think the people that follow have the best of intentions. Just kind of go down the wrong path. So I think when that happens now, and you see someone claiming to be God or be the next person or the Messiah, and and having these visions of the future, you kind of see like, wait a minute. It sounds like David Koresh. Wait a minute. This sounds like Charles Manson, where back then you had no reference to that. Like, this this Manson guy seems all right. Yeah. This Koresh guy isn't so bad. But, yeah. I, mean, but I mean, now you have a reference for it. That whole David Koresh thing, mm-hmm. I mean, it amazes me that he had, he was able to convince people. Yeah. I mean, the horrible things that he would do to the kids. Yeah. Allegedly. And... You know, the whole idea that, that married couples would come into his group and then he would get with the wife and it was under the, you know, the mm-hmm. guise of this was told to me, I need to do this by the by the heavens and you don't understand because I'm a higher power. Then how do you, I mean, if somebody tried to sell me on that bullshit, mm-hmm. yeah. I would laugh at them in the face. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, there are religions out there that do just as crazy things. I won't say which ones, but it's out there. Oh, the Haley's Comet? Do you <laughs> yeah, remember the yeah. Haley's oh, Comet yeah. cult? Yeah. The uh, Heaven's Gate people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. The, like if we wear the same tennis shoes right. and... They all, uh, I think they neuter themselves and then... Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I guess castrated is the proper term. But... Um, neuter dogs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> usually, I mean, I won't say usually, but a lot of times these 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 kind of... Weird religious cults, it always ends badly. Mm-hmm. Not always, because I'm sure they're out there, and we just don't know Most about them. The, yeah, I mean, sometimes they're, you know, they're the uh, the Armageddon people. We see it every six months. This this cult, blank, slash church here, says that the earth ends next Tuesday. Be warned. Right. But they usually don't kill themselves because of it. <laughs> usually. Do you think it ends badly when it does, like David Koresh mm. ended badly, uh, when the uh, ATF tried to serve... Um, Basically, they were just serving papers to mm-hmm. search for illegal guns that have been yeah, purchased. Yeah. That's all they were doing. They weren't mm-hmm. trying to such, shut it down. 
but they were trying to serve search warrants and were so outgunned. Oh yeah. When you, that story, those it, visuals of it, that fire and yeah, is, is a podcast for another day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, Jonestown, right. Uh, ended poorly. Mm-hmm. Obviously the, the Manson family ended poorly. Do they end poorly because at some point the leader realizes they've lost control? I think so, yeah. Or they're losing control? Well, like I said from the get-go, I don't think the leader has good intentions. I know the, I believe the followers do. They just get sucked in. You hear stories of people all the time that were in cults and leave that and had no idea that was the intention behind it all. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's the thing with, Ma- even by the end with Manson's family, especially once they tried to move out to, when they moved out to the desert, mm-hmm. uh, that's when members actually started to leave. Yeah. But the leaders always had this control complex and they want to be, uh, you know, worshiped and, and loved. And what set Manson off was the fact that he really believed he was within arm's length of a recording contract. Mm-hmm. And when he realized that wasn't going to happen, his family members had been gone, going out and, you know, they would go into Beverly Hills and Los Angeles and they would look for houses that had open windows and uh, open doors and they would go in and they would rearrange furniture, but it was it usually ended with that. They really wouldn't even steal that much. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as he wasn't going to achieve his rock stardom that he thought he was destined to have, he sent them and, and they started stealing stuff mm-hmm. from the houses. And then ultimately, because he was familiar with um, with the house, the Tate house, well, the Roman Roman Polanski was right. living there. So he sent them to that house because he'd been to that house before because a record guy had lived there at some point. And uh, that's the only reason why they chose that house because he'd been there. Wow. And it was the same thing with the second night of the murders. It was a house that he was familiar with. Um, but yeah, that's what set him off. It's like it occurred to him that he probably couldn't keep up the whole rouge of Helter Skelter is coming very mm-hmm. much longer. Yeah. And he didn't achieve the rock stardom. Or, or he, he thought he'd exhausted all his outlets to achieve the rock stardom. Uh, and it set him off. And mm. he became, or the family became murderers. Um, with David Koresh, you know, he'd been preaching for weeks that the government was going to try to shut him down. Oh, really? Like, that was the boogeyman. He knew that was happening? He made the government the boogeyman to his cult. So when they actually did catch wind that they had so many guns on that ranch... Mm. And the ATF wanted to go in with warrants. It, it was it was almost like his prophecy was fulfilled. So all his members act well, not all, but a good majority of his members acted as they had been taught to act, mm-hmm. and that was to attack the aggressors that were acting on the behalf of some evil force that none of us understand. Yeah, just so weird. It's crazy. Uh, Kooks, I tell you, Kooks. <sighs> We need to do Adam's ghost. We do. We need to clear the palate with more creepiness. <laughs> but this is a little more innocent creepiness. Uh, where are we going? You'll see. You're not going to tell me uh, yet? Right beforehand. I know. It's right in front of me, but you'll see. But I want to know. You'll see in a few seconds. I want to know. In a few seconds, you'll know. Uh, we'll do Adam's ghost. Next. I'm Drew Leiter. And I'm Cleo Jacobs. We're here to tell you about our podcast, The Earth Station, DCU. Join us every week as we discuss the DC universe. We talk everything DC, including comics, television, the cinematic universe, and so much more. We look forward to bringing you some great reviews and discussions. And don't forget, read, read more, more comics. comics. We're what, uh, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks from Halloween. What yeah. is that, four weeks? We'll say four weeks. Yeah, four, four weeks. weeks. Yeah. Four weeks out. Yeah. You have four Adam's ghosts left. That's sad, isn't it? You better make this a good one. I think it will be. Where are we going? Well, we spoke of the, the clownings recently, right? Oh, 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 I like the sound of this already. There are disputes of where the clownings began, but you said most likely that they began in South Carolina. That's, that, that seems to be yeah. where it took off, though South, Southern California, California is claiming they right, have it. Right, but right. but well, South Carolina. South Carolina is where we're going this week for Adam's Ghost. We it's, haven't touched the Carolinas yet, you know. I've never touched a Carolina. <laughs> as far as my database, it's growing by the second, and every week it grows and grows more and more. South Carolina has quite a few 
ghost stories, you know. How about in Blacksburg, South Carolina? Y'all ready to go on down to Blacksburg and talk about some ghosts? Here we go. At Rock House Road. There's an old tale of the history of Rock House Road where the road runs alongside the King's Mountain Battleground. Rock House Road got its name from a rock house that was constructed in the early 1800s, you know. That was my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. <laughs> uh, this house is still standing and can be viewed only one day a year. Wait. Yeah. The house can only be viewed one day a year? Yeah, so says this story written in me by one of my researchers. Yeah. Why can't you see it the other 364? I'll, I'll email him back. I'm not sure. The legend is... It's still there. The legend is... But you can a, only see it once a year. Yeah. That's I'm a, sorry. I can't, I, I'm not trying to interrupt. I, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm trying to get the story straight in my head. That's the only information I have. That, is, the go, is the house itself some sort of ghostly apparition that only appears once a year? I'm not sure. I read these as you read them as well. They come in straight off the dot matrix, and here I am. <laughs> the legend is there was a, a family that lived in the house, a happy family, but they had a mentally challenged daughter. She was to stay in the house cellar because she was an embarrassment, they say. Her father made her stay in the cellar all day, but at night he would give her a candle and let her venture outside. One night the daughter decided to go out further than usual, and her candle, however, blew out. The girl was lost. She tried to find her way in the darkness, but she was unsuccessful, and she later died in the wilderness. It is said that anyone who lives on Rock House Road can light a candle and hold it to the window, and the girl's face will appear. In Blacksburg, Rock House Road. Can we try that here? No, that's terrifying. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Just like a candle by the window? Yeah. Ah! How about let's stay in Blacksburg at White Wolf. Y'all like it here in Blacksburg? At White Wolf Hollow. Here in Blacksburg, we have White Wolf. White Wolf Hollow is a popular hangout for local teenagers and coon hunters. <laughs> Daddy, when can I hunt some coons? Uh, there were reports of seeing floating lights that looked like flashlights. Also, people have talked about seeing a huge cat-like critter that has eyes that shine red instead of the normal fluorescent green shine. Is critter written on your screen, or that, is that your word? That's a real word I'm reading right now, critter. A lot of the coon hunters have repeatedly ran over white monkeys that cross the road in front of their trucks. What? When they go back to look for them, there's nothing there. Did y'all see that damn white monkey? <laughs> White Wolf Hollow is next to uh, Kings Mountain State National Parks. There are graveyards all in the woods around the park. I'm driving along, right? Yeah. I'm right over there next to Kings Hollow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A damn white monkey jumped out of the woods. It just ran right in front of my Jeep. I ran him over. Went back. Nothing there. Ghost, ghost of white monkeys. Isn't that terrifying? Right there. Graveyards all in the woods around the par- these national state parks, and there's crazy things afoot. Me and Johnny Ray, we were out coon hunting the other night. Damn white monkey ran right out in front of the Jeep. Uh, how about in, uh, wow, Blenheim, South Carolina. Blenheim. Y'all don't go down there to Blenheim. At Bingham's Light in South Carolina. It is said that back in the early 1800s, a man's two children became missing in a snowstorm. Daddy, why is it so cold out here? Shut up! The man went in search of his children and never returned, and neither did his children. It is said that if you drive into the woods by a dirt road, you will see his lantern glowing in the distance. It's also said if you scream to the light that you have as children, the light will turn red in anger. <laughs> <laughs> no reports of anyone getting close to the light, but if you wait long enough, maybe the light will come to you. Daddy, my eyes are burning. Ooh, there's an update. December 2013. <laughs> Bingham's lights appear close in the old cemetery, which is actually split into two sections, one on each of the two hilltops. If you drive down the road between the graveyards towards the woods... You will see the lights. Now, it works best if you get out and walk in that direction. Oh, February 2014 update. It is reported that the place is now gated off, presumably because people are shooting at the light. (laughs) (laughs) There's some damn Satan lights. Get it. That's funny. South Carolina has some good I can stories. believe that. I can believe that. Yeah. A couple of yahoos out there with their <laughs> shotgun shooting up a cemetery at 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, this is terrifying. And Charleston. Charleston seems to have a lot of scary stories. How about in the White Point Gardens in Charleston, South Carolina? This is a quick short one here, but spirits of it, of the pirates. Just, uh, just an observation yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. South Carolina uh-huh. loves naming their things white. They, they really do. Just an observation. 
Not reading anything into it? That's very true. A lot of things named White in South Carolina. At White Point Gardens in Charleston, spirits of the pirates that were hung there have been seen walking around the park in search of their executioners. That would be terrifying. Imagine a, a ghost pirate looking for its killer. Arr. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Uh, That's um, in in the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah, I think the the best scene in all of those movies is that opening scene in the first one. You think so? Where they're hanging the pirates. Really? Uh huh. See, I haven't seen those yet. It's the. Remember, you've never seen no, a Pirates I, of the Caribbean after movie. The fear of me getting stuck on the the ride. I haven't seen them. I've what? told you this many times. So you can't watch the movie. Well, you do know in the movie they don't go on the ride. <laughs> I'm aware. It left a, I'm not afraid. It left a bad taste in my mouth. Regardless, <laughs> I think the most well done scene in any of those movies is that opening scene in the first one. Really? Mm-hmm. How about a few more from South Carolina? You, uh, please let them be about pirates. Uh, I believe this one is not. In Columbia, on Olympia Road. In Whitesburg. At the abandoned mill. M- meal. Oh, wow. It's taking me to at the abandoned mill near the fairgrounds. It's hard to say. It's a hard word. Meal. There's an update. I'm trying not to look ahead and read the update. Dun, 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 no, not, dun, dun. Yeah, we're re- <laughs> Several years ago, uh, when children were forced to work, there was a mill that was. <laughs> Several years ago, when children gave a damn <laughs> there was... and actually got down and contributed to something, there was a mill that a deranged man owned. Many, oh, I'm crazy. <laughs> many children died of exhaustion, and the owners put their bodies in the furnace. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. It is a highly spiritual place, and there have been many odd happenings here, including the furnace mysteriously turning on and the sound of children crying. Why did the guys put their bodies in the furnace? I don't know. Uh, he said they, they died of exhaustion from overworking them. <laughs> and so they put their bodies in the furnace to you cover boys, it up. You boys, you keep it up. You know what happens to you? It's the furnace for you. Can I read this update, please? April 2008. Whoever submitted the story, you merely used the plot from the movie The Haunting. It has since been turned into the apartments. <laughs> what? That's the movie. That's that's the plot of The Haunting. I've never uh, seen The Haunting. That's what the update says. Oh. Why wouldn't they just remove the damn story so I don't look stupid right now, huh? You. Now, what was the third at the end? What's that? It, it says after that it has since been turned into apartments. I guess I don't know if the actual is that from the movie. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe they're uh, making a joke. I see no context here. It says April 2008. Whoever submitted that, you merely used the plot from the movie The Haunting. It has since been turned into apartments. Which apartments is misspelled? So I don't know what they mean. <laughs> How's it spelled? Apartments. Apartments. Yeah, with a capital A, by the way. Apartments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last but not least, I'm, I'm going to pick a totally random one. Uh, yeah, because these others have been so well researched. <laughs> they have. Here we go. I don't read these. I read them as you read them. In Gaffney, South Carolina, at Cherokee Falls. Down in Cherokee Falls near Blacksburg, there's a thing no one knows what he is, but everyone who's seen him calls him Booger Jim. <laughs> Y'all know what I saw early tonight. Booger Jim. He will, he will haunt you if you go down in Cherokee Falls on the side of the road. The kicker is he's half man and half cow. An old booger. <laughs> is that Matthew McConaughey is Booger Jim? <laughs> Just the way these are written. I love to drive my Lincoln. The way these are, I'm going to read that sentence again the way it's written for me, okay? Down in Cherokee Falls near Blacksburg, there's a thing no one knows what he is, but everyone who has seen him calls him Booger Jim. <laughs> He will haunt you if you go down in Cherokee Falls on the side of the road. He is half man, half cow. That's the sentence I was given. I've got to translate that and make it presentable for you. There's a story about a man <laughs> who's half man, half cow, that goes by the name of Booger Jim that lives on down in Checker, Cherokee Drive, Cherokee Falls, near Whitesburg. <laughs> you want one more? Yeah. One more random. Uh-huh. We're going deep here. Ready for it? Give it to me. How about, uh, man, these, these words are different. At, <laughs> at, uh, at, these <laughs> words are different. <laughs> at Merle's Inlet in Hermitage, South Carolina, specifically at Alice's Grave. 
Oh, okay. Okay. I love listening to this song on Thanksgiving. <laughs> now, when Alice was young, she was engaged to a guy, but her brother didn't approve. When she got sick, he threw her ring into the marsh. Then she died. If you go to her grave, which is just a little flat stone flush with the ground with just her name Alice on it, walk around possibly eight times, your ring will fill a pool on it. So, so you have to be married. Oh, yeah, or a senior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> your Belfort ring <laughs> will yeah. fill a pool on it. Not my drama. <laughs> my drama face. My drama and band. <laughs> So as he, I mean, many great ones uh, from South Carolina. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm impressed with South Carolina. A good variety of stories here. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. They are all based off movies, apparently. <laughs> I love Booger Jim. Booger Jim's my favorite. I do love Booger Jim. Matthew McConaughey does too. I may have to. Uh, that kind of hurts my. Can we come back to South, South Carolina? Well, you can keep going. You got. Uh, uh, we got uh, ten minutes left in the show. Do you want one more? If you want. Because I love the music just droning, I'm gonna, droning on I'm gonna give and you on. A, a, long, a random long one from uh, Polly's Island in, in uh, Merle. Yo, Polly, see that down there with the island? What are the odds of this? Okay, this is weird. We have hundreds of stories in this page here, and I picked this random one uh, at the All Saints Episcopal Cemetery. Alice of the Hermitage is buried here. What? A flat gravestone with just the name Alice is located beneath a huge oak. Legend has it. This is a little bit different direction. You walk here. around the grave. You walk around the grave 13 times backwards and call her name twice. She will come out over the old brick wall at the back of the cemetery. She's looking for her engagement ring that was lost in a creek. Kind of the same story. Have you seen my engagement ring? It is said women can feel her tugging on their wedding rings when they visit her grave. And she can also be caught on film. Also, you can smell strong, sweet flowers in the cemetery when there are no flowers, shrubs, or even green brushes around. And has the uh, location of the cemetery. So apparently Alice is a big deal in South Carolina. Alice doesn't live here anymore. Would you rather be brought a spirit presence from uh, from Alice or Booger Jim? Booger Jim? Half man, half cow? Half man, it? half cow. Is Come he, on, man. Is he like a normal guy with his feet but like a cow face or what? I hope so. That's that's pretty scary. <laughs> that's what I want to see. I don't... I don't want to see the I don't want to see the human head with the cow body. I want to see the cow head with the human body. Uh, Spartanburg. Which he's not... It's... It, Look, yeah. I, I don't want to be that guy, but couldn't be a cow. If he's a man. Yeah. Like a cow. Well, I guess he could be half man, man, half cow. That's what it is, yeah. Man head utters. Ooh, that's rough. How Otherwise, about, he'd be half man, half bull. In uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, at Broom High School, many teachers at Broom High School have told the story of a construction worker that helped build the school and had to bring his daughter to work with him one day. Because it was bring your daughter to work. They were on the newly finished roof, and the girl wasn't paying attention as to where she was going and walked off their roof and was killed. <laughs> End of story. This was not written by a teacher. <laughs> if you're up at the school at night really late, you can hear the cries of a girl screaming for her father. Many teachers have experienced this, but no students yet. Daddy. Daddy. Here's your one chance, Daddy. Very tall. Very tall building. Yeah, yeah. Um... Why were they up on the roof? They're working. They're building the building. But the, it was just finished. I don't. Uh, the story said just the newly finished school. Uh, many teachers at Broome High School have told the story of a construction worker helped build the school and had to bring his daughter to work with him one day. They're on the newly finished roof. Yeah, maybe they're inspecting it. They're they're roof inspectors. Bonnie, you get up on that damn roof and make sure <laughs> every nail is in there like it's supposed to be. I don't want to, Daddy. I will I'll give you one of these. Okay, last one. I promise you, last one. This one I, I did pre-read. This. This is very hearsay. Once again, <laughs> from Sp- because these are all proven facts. Once again, from Spartanburg, <laughs> Alice at the uh, the Alice con- at the uh, at the Converse College. Alice specifically in Wilson Hall at the Converse College in Spartanburg, South Carolina. There's a, a stairway to the bell, t- bell tower here. Legend has it that it, two men were arguing up arguing up there. This is not written properly. They were arguing up there, and one was pushed off of the bell tower. No! I'm gonna read this as it's as it's written. This is what? this is an angry ghost. The door to the bell tower is locked, and the ghost is said to have two red eyes. I personally have not seen it, but one of my classmates did. There is no Dana, only so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. Yeah, I promise you. Yeah, I personally did not see this, but one of my classmates did. And he'd never lie about a yeah. thing like that. South Carolina, full of great stories. I think Booger Jim wins. 
It is. Yeah. I love or Alice. Stuff. I mean, Alice seems creepy. Or the uh, the girl with the candle in the window. The candle in the window. <laughs> Goodbye, Norma Jean. <laughs> it was South Carolina. Props to you. I think you win Adam's Ghost of 2016 so far. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Of 2016? Of 2016 so far? Yeah. Ghost Abraham Lincoln. That's true. Or yeah, that's How do you true. beat the ghost of Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> I do believe. I do believe. That's John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> is it possible? Dressed as a little girl carrying a candle. I don't want to tease this and not, and not deliver, but is it possible in about two or so weeks we may have our first international Adam's Ghosts? Is it possible? Is it possible? I don't know. I have nothing to do with this. I hope so. I want to have a... Uh, oh, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I guess it is possible. Some international items go, so I want it. Yeah? We'll see. Well, you nothing's stopping you from doing, say, I don't know, New Zealand tonight. I, I know, but I want an Australian here with me to talk about Australian ghost Can stories. I, how uh, this, um, these emails that you receive from around the country, right, 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 yeah. are, are they all over the world? Yeah, they're, they're worldwide. So if I told you one right now to close the show with, you could look it up. Sure, yeah. I want to know about Ghost of Burma. Burma? Uh-huh. I don't I don't have any Burma. Elaine, pack my bags. We're heading to Burma. I have no Burma. I'm sorry. It's not a very haunted place. Uh, okay, what about the ghost of New Zealand? I can do New Zealand if you want. You want uh, some- what about an, you know what? I, I want yeah. an Irish ghost. You want an Irish ghost? Yeah. I can find you an Irish ghost. Any certain part of Ireland? Belfast. Oh, I don't see Belfast. It's not a very haunted place. How about... Um, these are intense. We should have been uh, worldwide all along, shouldn't we? <laughs> Possibly so. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to pre-read these. There's some long ones, too, man. I, I, Irish people are very well-spoken. These are stories and paragraphs they're bringing in compared to the South Carolina people. <laughs> Booger Jim. Y'all want to hear about the legend of Booger Jim wow. one more time? In a uh, southern island at Leap Castle, there's a devilish creature that walks the castle it is believed the creature was created from the spirits of all the men and women who were killed there. In the castle? Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. How about in... Boy, there's a place called Tijuana in Ireland? Tijuana, Ireland? That's what it says. Hmm. I don't know if my, my lines are mixed here. <laughs> uh, at the <laughs> old... <laughs> at the <laughs> old Agua Caliente <laughs> Casino. <laughs> Something's fishy here. In Tijuana, Ireland? <laughs> That's I, th- I think my uh, my my telegraph or telegram may be mixed up here, but we're good. Uh, anyways, in this Tijuana Island casino, the old casino now houses a high school. It is said that on rainy nights you can see the apparition of a singer who used to perform at the casino in the 1940s. That singer, Eddie Rabbit, <laughs> Booger Jim. And I love a rainy night. <laughs> it is said that if you follow the woman apparition, you'll find two chests of money. The story goes that she. <laughs> Fund. If you follow that woman, you'll find a fantastic chest. The story goes that she poisoned her lover, and he chased her for the antidote. When she wouldn't give it to him, he shot her, obviously sealing his fate and that of the money. Well, that's the dumbest thing he could have done. In Tijuana, Ireland. <laughs> in, in, in Ireland. Yeah. When you've been poisoned and someone has the antidote, I mean, naturally you would kill them. Yeah. Rather than trying to get the antidote. Right. You know what I enjoy about Adam's Ghost the most, I think? These are so terribly and poorly written, I have to translate in my head. So when I'm saying it, I'm not listening to the story. But hearing your summary of it is when I finally hear the story. <laughs> Can I go ahead and speak honestly? That's fine. So I have a new game I'm going to play Yeah, now. so I have no idea until you... <laughs> I'm going to start making up... Damn it, don't do that. ...the opposite stories of what you tell me. And I'll be like, oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, would you do that? If someone has the antidote, you'd kill them? I mean, I guess it depends on how close it's an to... anger, working. you know? It's an anger. Yeah. And in theory, you could kill them for trying to kill you and then grab the antidote from their pocket. That's very ironic. <laughs> Why is that? Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, a little ironic. Uh, but that's all we have for Adam's Ghost. How close was Tijuana, Ireland? <laughs> that was just a, a flub. The, 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 the lavish casinos of Tijuana, <laughs> Ireland. There's a whole it's now page. a school, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's now a school, it's now a but school. it's haunted. Yeah, by a former singer, poison apparition singer. No, no, no. I think you're, you're, you got your stories confused. Did I? Did I get it mixed yeah. up? Yeah. Oh man. Um. Well, if you'd like to make a suggestion for Adam's ghost, please do. And we have all across the world. I have the UK has thousands of stories. Why don't you call us with your own ghost story? Ah, uh, I do like that. Read yeah. us the ghost story. We'll have it on Adam's ghosts. 
Call the Adam and JP Ghost Line now, 615-538-5770. That's 615-538-5770. Operator standing by. That number, one more time, 615-538-5770. Do it. It's how tell, many us, time, tell us a ghost story. Even if your father or uncle or someone told you a great ghost story as a child, tell it to us here. We'll play it on the air. As long as it doesn't involve someone with a hook for her hand. Or Alice with a wedding band. Or the plot to the song The Last Kiss. Or The Haunting, the movie. <laughs> or The Conjuring. Or Booger Jim. Don't call and tell us about this. There's this crazy doll named Annabelle. <laughs> Actually, if you have a Booger Jim story, please do tell me. I, Booger Jim should be a character that is investigated further. <laughs> What would Booger Jim sound like? I'm going to Google Booger Jim right now. I figure Booger Jim should have a high-pitched voice. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm hey, Booger Jim. By the way, if you look up Booger Jim, that's it's got quite a following. Now click images. Wow. I'm curious as to which half is which with Booger Jim. Uh. Ah. Half man, half cow. This is at Booger Jim's Hollow. Oh, that's not Booger Jim. That's just a scary clown. Uh, yeah, so you can call that number, uh, leave us some ghost stories, or just a comment about the show. Hey, if you're good enough and you can put sentences together in, in a fashionable way, perhaps we'll even have you on the show. Yeah, please do it. It's funny the things that come up if you do a Google image search of Booger Jim, <laughs> such as Jim Carrey rolling a booger. Yeah, well, are you surprised? Maybe not. This is the, this is the, the story of Jim Carrey. <laughs> but really, if you look up a Google search of Booger Jim... It's a lot of stuff. Well, I will not do that, but huh. I'll take your word for it. It's a, it's a real deal. Um, hey, before we go, this was just announced tonight as we record this on the Thursday before you hear it on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, Lady Gaga, Gargar, Gargar. going to perform at the Super Bowl this year. Oh, really? Uh-huh. She's really? the halftime performer. Nice. That'd be fun. Yeah. You know, on TripAdvisor.com, <laughs> a, a site I trust greatly, I listen to your Lady Gaga. <laughs> how, how, how often do you use TripAdvisor? Sometimes on my big trips. Adam, what do you think? Lady Gaga performing at the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, if I was going to go to the Super Bowl, I'd use TripAdvisor.com. Uh, but of uh, things to do in Blacksburg, South Carolina, number three of three things is, is Booger Jim White. Is Booger Jim's Hollow. <laughs> number three of three. No. Yeah. It's Booger Jim's Hollow. It's a place to be and be seen in Blacksburg, South Carolina. We I'm, call it Booger Jim. I'm going to look deep, more deeply into uh, Booger Jim. Speaking of things I'm looking into all all the time during the Halloween season, I have to go check up on my buddy Bubba Sawyer on YouTube, you know. He died. And he didn't die, but he's he's changed things quite a bit. I thought he died. He didn't. He thought he died? Somebody told me he died. Bubba Sawyer did not die. What's he doing now? Uh, he, He's kind of racist now. He's, he's dropped the leather face gimmick. Oh, no. And now he's just doing racism stuff. It's weird. Does he have a Confederate flag behind him when he talks? He does. Um, and he has like a, an old Confederate hat he always wears. Shows his face now. Like an old-timey Civil War yeah, Confederate like a hat? Yeah, gray kind of woolly. Yeah. It's weird. Such a change in character. I could support him in, in his leather face days, Has but it, now, Is it really that that big of a leap in I would change think so. in character? I would think men that love leather face have some kindness in their heart. People obsessed with chainsaws <laughs> usually preach racial racial diversity. Diver, yeah. Usually preach racial diversity. Yeah, yeah. You it's your so. belief. But I was sad to see that Bubba Sawyer took that route. How does that? What does that have to do with TripAdvisor? No, I was. I don't know. It's Halloween time. I thought Bubba Sawyer. <laughs> but what were you gonna say about TripAdvisor? No, I told you the, the TripAdvisor number three of things to do in Blacksburg, oh, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Booger Jim's is on TripAdvisor. His Booger Jim's Hollow was number three. What's three. number two? If, in, if you're a, in Blacksburg. That's a great question. Let me look that up. I'm going to Google Booger Jim again for the second time today. <laughs> or just uh, things to do in South Carolina. Here where, we go. Where does Bubba Sawyer live? I believe Alabama, but I'm not sure. Makes total sense. <laughs> total sense. Uh, top three things to do in Blacksburg, South Carolina. Uh, number three, like we said, is Booger Jim's Hollow. Number two. Number two is King. What the hell is this show? What are we doing here? Number two is Kings Mountain State Park. And the number one thing to do in Blacksburg, South Carolina, Kings Mountain National Military Park. Da, na, 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 na. Da, hey, that's da, where the, uh, the crazy, uh, all the stuff is, remember? Uh huh. That's the, where the, the actual the gravestones hills are. hills and the graves. The white and, monkeys. And, and people shooting at the graves. The white monkeys, yeah. What's the moral of this story? 
Don't go to South Carolina. Stay in South Carolina. <laughs> Unless you're a loyal listener to the Adam and JP show we from love, South, Carolina, we love South Carolina, which we do have a lot of. So we do love you. And please uh, subscribe, rate, and review. <laughs> it's a beautiful state. <laughs> Booger Jim is a close friend of mine. Charleston. Now, all kidding aside, yeah. I'm being absolutely honest here. There are a lot of good hotels near Booger Jim's Hollow. Charleston, South Carolina uh-huh. is one of the most beautiful. Is that what the term I want to use? It's a good looking town. Is it really? It really is. Yeah. It's very, I mean. A kind of old timey, but fun and classy. And uh, I, hear uh, I mean, there's, there's modern stuff there too, but uh, I knew a few years ago when we were in Myrtle beach and I drove in to see a friend of mine in Charleston from Myrtle beach, you just kind of come over this hill. And as you come over the hill, you see this gorgeous bridge that spans out and it's just, it was, I was almost breathtaking really? driving into Charleston, South Carolina. Mm. And that's that's the truth. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. <laughs> you can take that to Booger Jim. Well, Adam, uh, I think we've wasted enough time. I think so. It's late. You're going to give that, that hotline number one more time? Oh, Make that hotline bling, will you? The hotline bling. Yeah. Call me on my cell phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to donate, I don't know. Your words to Adam's ghosts. Call us now. 615 615- 538-5770-615-538-5770. If you don't hear my voice in the voicemail, leave one anyway. Do it. Because we, we just tested it a few minutes it's ago. It's working properly. It, it, it works great. Mm-hmm. I should play the message that I left for myself. No, I'm probably not. No. no. Uh, check us out online, adamandjp.com. On Instagram and Twitter at adamandjp. And on Facebook at facebook.com slash adamandjp. I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. This is the Adam and JP Show. This has been a production of the Adam and JP family of On Demand Talk Radio. AdamandJP.com Right now. Right now. Right now. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at ESONetwork.com.